folks. So I said I wasn't going to go too deep this year. I was going to try and capture as many objects as I could. But old habits are hard to break. And I ended up capturing around 27 hours of data on NGC 7822. And let me show you what I've got. So this is a target where I had to start all over again because my first try was a complete train wreck. Let me show you my first attempt at capturing this. And if you look at this this picture, I don't know if you can hear Kane barking in the background, but they've got him in a crate in the backyard while they put in a new trampoline and he won't stop barking. So if you hear him, that that's what that's why he's barking. But anyway, the data. And this picture was so smudgy, I couldn't sharpen it. I didn't like the color. It just wasn't working. And I'm, and I, I just thinking, what if, what have I done wrong? I, I don't understand why this looks so bad. And then it occurred to me, well, I didn't have enough good data. So what happened? I ended up keeping all of my data, and it resulted in me not even being able to to sharpen it. It was so bad. And another thing I found out that was that my objective lens on my big refractor was filthy. I completely forgot to clean it. And I think it's been at least a year of not cleaning it because the dew shield is so long. I never looked down there. And when I did, it was horrible. So what I did is I cleaned off the refractor, the objective lens, and I threw away all of my HA data, at least 10 hours of data. I threw away all of my oxygen oxygen data, at least 10 hours. I didn't have enough clear nights to throw away the, the sulfur, so I did keep the sulfur, but at least the HA data was replaced with better data. And let me show you my reprocessed data. Okay, so here is my updated picture. Now this is using 11 hours of new HA data and I was more selective about the HA data that I kept. I actually had more than 11 hours and it has new oxygen data and the, 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 the image is sharper, uh, the colors came out better. And let me, let's just do a side by side comparison here. Let's see how you do this side by side. I never do this. How do you do this side by side? Oh, there we go. Windows has a kind of a quirky side by side thing going on here. But I, I, I definitely think this new one came out better. And, and look at the up here. You can see it a little more crisp up there. And look at here. I couldn't do anything with this data. You see the difference there here and here? I see a big difference. And uh, let me show you a few more things here. Now, I said I had 27 hours of data on this project. And I can tell you right now that was absolutely overkill because what I did is I had seven hours. This is my HA data and I originally had seven hours of data and I thought, well, you know what? It's a little bit grainy up here and maybe I can still pull off more detail if I capture more data. And so what I did is uh, I don't have that seven hour version right anymore, but I captured four more hours. And so I had 11 hours of data and I compared my 11 hours to the seven hours, I couldn't see one bit of difference. You know, they say you hit up against that point of diminishing returns. I definitely hit up against that um, after the seven hour mark. Maybe even it would have happened earlier. I'm not sure, but the extra four hours didn't make a difference. Now it probably would have made a difference if I ran this, uh, there's a script over here, image analysis, the, the noise evaluation might might show you that the 11 hour version um, has less noise. But you know what? If I can't see it with my own eyes, um, to me, then it's just not worth it. So I could have I could have saved myself some time and moved on to a different project. But oh, well, live and learn. OK. OK, so I wanted to show you this little quick trick I do sometimes with my pictures. Now, I did shrink the stars in this picture, but um, some stars were so big and bloated they they fell outside of the mask I was using and they didn't get shrunk and I want to show you how I deal with some of those stars like for example um, I really don't like this this big bright star there I want people to sort of focus on the 
the nebulosity when they see my picture. And I think this this big bright star near the center draws too much attention. And so what I'm going to do, and it does look rather bloated. I don't really think it's that bright, but sometimes stars come out bloated when you capture them. And let me show you how I'm just going to shrink this really quick. I'm going to use this clone stamp tool. And I'm going to turn the softness all the way to the right. And I'll just make this value the radius 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of hide that star with an area right next to it. So let's, let's, let's try this. And I'm going to sort of just click on it a few times. Okay. I didn't get rid of it completely. I just sort of clone stamped the area right next to it. And I can still see where the star was. Because I, I don't want to get rid of it. I need to know where it was so I can put a new star there, a smaller one. So let's clone stamp this star. Click on it a few. Ooh, that's, that's probably too big of a radius for the star. Let's drop the radius down to, to 50. And let's put the... A, a new star there that's a little bit smaller. Let's click on it a few times. Eh, something like that. Maybe not perfect. I'd probably dress up the area around it a little bit more. Though it doesn't look like it was a uh, clone stamped. But that looks pretty good. Okay, let's click on that. And, and let's see how the old star looks compared to the, the new one. What do you think of that? So if you have a bloated star, they really they really are easy to fix. Just use that clone stamp tool. I think that looks pretty natural, don't you? Or, or would you rather have the big star? I guess it's a matter of taste. I like the smaller star myself. Okay, folks, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.